you are not sure what to pray, let those words be your prayer. That is enough. Another way that God has his way in us is through the light that we behold, that we bring in that light of joy, manifestation, inspiration. And since Sky talked to you and said something about my photography and filmmaking, I thought that I might show you one of those award-winning photographs right now. Here it is. What do you think? Yeah, there's a little something going on right there. Uh, it's pretty good, right? No? What's wrong with it? What's this picture need? Yes, it needs what I call nura. Do you know what that means? It's Aramaic for light, okay? So, your Aramaic is rusty. You can use that at a party tonight, okay? So, let's affirm that together. It's all about the new rock. Ready? Together? It's all about the new rock. Now, what this picture needs then is more light, and there it is. One of my favorite places, or maybe my favorite room on campus here in Hawaii. If you have not seen this room, this is our Peace Chapel, and you should go visit it. It's beautiful. And that's what we're talking about today, is bringing in the light to your heart and to your soul and then giving it back out. In photography, these are camera lenses. And this is the aperture opening that we use to decide how much light gets into the picture when we set our intent on what we want that picture to look like. We do that. Oh, we have arrows. Yes. So when you were doing your 10-mile outrigger canoe ride this morning when you were brushing your teeth in the mirror did you say how's your aperture <laughs> right, did you say that you may have said looks pretty good or you may have said my aperture's gotten closed my aperture's gotten a little bit dim so i would like to know how to open it wide i would like to know how to do that and have that what charles and myrtle fillmore talk about the, the co-founders of unity that inner light, that inner inspiration, so that I can live my life and put one foot in front of the other and be the best that I can be. So step one would be open your aperture then. Lots of scripture talks about this. It is mentioned in the Bible alone over 300 times. Okay, and this is my favorite time. In Matthew 6, it says, your eyes are windows into your body. If you open your eyes wide in wonder and belief, your body fills up with light. If you live squinty-eyed in greed and distrust, your body is dank cellar. If you pull the blinds on your windows, what a dark life you will lead. He said, open your eyes wide. I think that is what he means when he says, bring it into your heart and soul. That's what he's talking about. I think it's what my mother meant from Memphis, Tennessee, when she says, be bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. <laughs> she said, odd. Did I say I? I? I've been accused of having a Southern accent. <laughs> I know, right? It's not, not, not totally not true. I think we could have not just Aloha Sunday with Hawaiian ancient Proverbs. We could have Southern Ancient Proverbs Sunday. Maybe we do uh, uh. And contrary to what you guys say at the end of the service when you say howdy, y'all, to the people in Memphis, we don't say that. We are way too sophisticated. We say, looky here. How's your mom and them? Loosely translated, that means, let me tell you what that means. It means, metaphysically speaking, it means how's your light doing? So ask your neighbor right now, looky here, how's your mom and them? Go ahead, do it. <laughs> While you're looking at your neighbor, what did Jesus mean by squinty eye? You guys are pretty good at that. Squinty eye, what did Jesus mean by that? Try that with your neighbor right now. Scrunch your face up and say, why did you wear that? <laughs> Can't believe you wore that to church. When we judge, when we judge, and when we are being judged, it doesn't feel too good. We have anxiety about that. Or, or we don't breathe. It's not healthy. Not a good thing. And what's worse is when we turn that gaze up on us, that squint upon us in the mirror in the morning, and we say, 
you have a couple more wrinkles. <laughs> Your teeth are not quite as white. And you're just too short, too dark, too, uh, too blonde, too much of a country accent, too, oh, what am I going to do today? Why go on? So what do we got to do? Step one, open your aperture. Oh, Course in Miracles says, judgment will always give you false direction, but vision shows you where to go. So if you have narrow vision in life, if you have narrow vision, you can never get to where you really can go, not even in this moment. So how is your light doing? You know, this lady that I met last week in the Big Island, her name is Laura Serene, beautiful name. I met her, and she has an incredible story to tell that really exemplifies what I'm talking about today. I was basically told that I would have two years, basically, if I didn't do chemo and radiation, that I would have two years to live. That was my prognosis. And now it's been seven. But when I found out I had cancer... I instantly felt like this has to be a blessing. It's just very well disguised. And I don't see it yet, but I know it's disguised. Um, I didn't know what was next. I was told I had two years to live. I refused chemo or radiation, any of the follow-up treatments. And that was because I asked God. And I got a real direct no. And every time I had to face that, it was, no, don't, don't do chemo or radiation. So the prognosis wasn't good. And um, for me, it didn't matter. I felt like I, it was quality. It wasn't quantity. Whatever I had was what I had. When I asked if I could interview her, she said no. And I was like, no means yes. I said, God said, yes, let's do this. And her story, what it means for me is her whole process of what she went through. Sometimes our eyes are opened by a diagnosis that we don't want to hear. Sometimes what she did, though, is she became aware, is what she told me. She became aware of every moment of her life, every step, every breath. So in camera speak, we would call that slow your shutter speed. As a photographer, what we do is we let more light into our lens and we keep it there longer by the shutter speed. So we do that in our own lives. Now, she said to do that, to slow your shutter speed, be aware, one moment of it at a time, with your breath. That's why I asked Sky, I said, stop, I'm going to shoot your t-shirt there. One breath at a time, that's the kanji symbol for it right there. Maybe put it on your mirror. One breath at a time to remind yourself, because many times we are not really breathing. We're uptight about something. So start with one breath and just let go. That was the next thing she said. Let go. She had to let go. She had a very, very nice gallery and an expensive paintings, and, but she said it was a very frenetic lifestyle, that she was stressed out all the time. She said, when I got my diagnosis, I let go of that. And she said, when I started to have what Myrtle Fillmore calls error thought, I just let it go. I stop myself right then, I breathe, and I let that thought go. And she says, that had a lot to do with me restoring my health. So then she talked about prayer. She said, hey, I talked to God. He said no to chemo. That's not what I'm going to do. So she heard that from God. And meditation, we talk about it all the time here. And of course, we know that you don't have to get down into a, a lotus cross-legged pose to meditate for an hour or the dying swan uh, pose. You don't have to do that, although the yoga is great. All of those things are wonderful. But sometimes keep it simple, breathe it in, have your way in me, God. I want you to see the second part of our conversation right now. It's been seven years now, and an opportunity came where I never thought I would have a, a shop again, or, you know, I didn't know what was next for me. And this opportunity came to me, and I realized that, you know, I love to greet people, I love to share, and this was a great avenue, and so what I thought was impossible to do again, here I am. I've worked in a lot of different mediums, so I'm trying to pass on the love of the arts with the kids. So, you know, we don't get to decide, doctors don't get to decide when we go. That's in God's hands. And so for me, this really is a bonus life and for an opportunity to do it differently and to bring joy in and just to choose to, you know, look at how beautiful things are in each moment because this is, this is what we have. It's amazing how many people come in the door and they're, they're given bonus lives too, but they don't see that that's what they have.
I love my favorite part is when Pepper jumped down on her arm right when she said, uh, she said, this is what we have. This is what we have right now, a bonus life. That's what we have is a bonus life. And so the third point, shine your light to others. She is a bird rescuer. She is doing what she can to take care of animals. She gets those birds to sing. I'm not sure how she does that. The big bird gets down in the nest with the little bird and warms it up. They're different breeds and everything. It's incredible what, uh, what they do. But she shares her aloha. That's what she said. She's sharing it with kids. She's sharing it with people. And she shares her aloha all the time. Shine your light on others. What if you took a thousand breaths in, but you never let it out? What would happen? It'd be bad, right? So what do you got to do? You got to get out your spiritual Myrtle and Charles Fillmore tool of a flashlight and shine it out to people. Shine it. Make sure the batteries work. <laughs> More meditation. More meditation to get those batteries to work. That ever happened to you. So with that shining your light out, that's what this church does all the time. I am amazed at what we do here. The Gregory House with the shelters. The feeding the homeless, the working with the senior citizens and the friendly hearts. We're singing and dancing, right? On Saturdays with those guys. And if you are not plugged into that, I just invite you to give us a call, be persistent and say, I want to do that. I want to be a part of that. I want to be a part of a community that shines their light out. A church, the Unity Church in Memphis, someone told me, she said, man, I would like to sing the peace song where we're holding hands and we're looking outward to the world. These, this team every day shines their light on me, and I love you guys. I really appreciate it. I mean, they let me get up here and sing. <laughs> I mean, I sang once in college, Bye Bye Birdie, yeah, whatever. So the fact that, and the people at home are still picking themselves up off the floors saying, what are you singing? Oh my gosh. But it's just something we can do for each other. And you do that. I know you send burst of lights out to people. There's one congregant here named Michael Powell who shares his light every day. He is a, a, an incredible artist, and he shares his light through his art and through what he does for Hawaii. So I'd like to show you a little bit of uh, a video where he is actually painting a painting for Sky's new office. Oh, it happens to be right over there, if you took a peek. He's painting it, and he never lets people in to... Um, watch him paint or talk to him, but no means yes. So we got to go in and I want you to see it. that just flows through you. The light is just kissing the edges of the mountains. So, and that's how you paint it. You don't do this in a forced manner. And I walked in and Delaine Wong saw me in a cast and she said, I'm gonna do healing blessings for you. And then I met, and you restored the light in me. I'm, I've been blessed to be able to pay it forward in the community of this church. Life is tough and you go through things and you forget in a moment what it was like and then you just need someone to put their arms around you and remind you that you're loved.
Thank you, Michael Powell. You Thank you. Wow. Would you like to see it? It's all about the light. Oh. It'll give me an extra excuse to go see Sky in his office. And oh, by the way, the other work of art you saw was a painting that you did, right? Sky painted that. Uh, I like your use of yellow uh, there. Uh, <laughs> you know, what strikes me about this painting so much is how the shadows are. I get lost in the shadows. We all get lost in the shadows, but it's the light and the shadows that come together to give it meaning. That's how it is in our life. You may say, hey, James, I want to share my light with somebody, but hey, right now I don't really have a light. Well, you do have a light. You can ask for help. You do have a light because you know what? Light is in everything, I promise you. Light is in places that it shouldn't logically even seem like it would be like the core of the earth. Did you know that there is light there? I do know because last week I got to go to Hale Ma'u Ma'u. Ma'u Ma'u. <laughs> and I got to stand on the edge of it. I walked up to the edge and I looked down and I said... That is hot. <laughs> then I said, what am I doing here? <laughs> yeah. Actually, what I really said was that is life. That is God. That is God everywhere. That is light in everywhere and everything. So when you bring forth your light through here into your mind and your soul, and you add love to it with prayer and meditation, and then you shine it out to the world, that's more than a work of art. That is your masterpiece. Thank you. We're going to go into prayer and meditation, but first I do have to show you one more print, one more picture. This picture represents someone who gave a little burst of light. It doesn't always have to be this big thing that you do. It can just be this little burst of light that you give someone like a pair of sandals to change somebody's life. Do it today, right today. Call someone, say, I love you. Say, I forgive you. Whatever it takes, just be there for that person and it'll change your life and it is because you, you are the light. I invite you to close your eyes now as we go into prayer and meditation. God, we've gone over many ideas, many concepts, many thoughts about light today with many videos and many pictures. But number one among all things, we know that at the core of our being, there is light that we take care of and that we shine to others, just like the core of the earth and that light and that earth that we will take care of. Lord, thank you for today. Thank you for this moment, moment to moment, breath to breath, as we enter into the sacred and holy meditation. 